Hey, this is Angie Brown, and we're continuing on with uh, Lambda. I think a really cool challenge for Lambda would be to uh, use Rust, as Rust is um, a little bit different because you're basically building up binaries, and I don't think it relies on the runtime the same way these other ones do. And uh, I haven't had an opportunity to do this, so I figured this would be a great challenge for us to uh, try to pull off. So I'm going to go to the documentation, and they have this section here. Um, I, haven't, I haven't read much on it, but building Lambda functions with Rust. Because Rust compiles to native code, you don't need a dedicated runtime to run Rust code on Lambda. Instead, use the Rust runtime client to build your project locally and then deploy it to Lambda using the provided AL2023, so that's Amazon Linux 2023 or Amazon Linux 2 runtime. When you use the provided, etc., Lambda automatically keeps the operating system up to date. So I'm not saying I'm the best at Rust, but I definitely have uh, some experience with it. So I think that we will be uh, okay utilizing it here. So the thing we need to read about is this Rust runtime client. So we'll go over here and take a look. All right, they're finally loaded. Let's go down here. So this package uh, makes it easy to run ABS Lambda functions within Rust. Sounds good. So we can tap brew, do install. So let's go ahead and give this a go and see how far we can get with this. We'll go ahead and make a new folder called Rust. If you haven't looked into Rust, it is a statically typed language, um, very low level, think like uh, C or C++, but um, thread safe and generally recommended for use these days. So you don't have to be super good at this, but we'll have to be good enough just to get it working. And the best part about using Rust is that it's extremely efficient. Uh, runtime for Rust, Lambda. Uh, it's extremely efficient in terms of uh, how small the stuff is. So if you can learn how to utilize it, it is extremely powerful. But, uh, you know, it, it depends on what you're looking to do. Uh, I already have seen the lost the tab. I'm not sure why. We'll go ahead and open this tab again here. And what I was trying to do was grab the URL here and put this here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, CD into the correct directory, though. We'll hit enter here, and we'll hit enter again. So we're installing Cargo Lambda. There it goes. We'll read what's next, getting started. So use Homebrew um, or pip. Oh, I guess we could use pip, but brew is fine as well. And so we can generate our new function. So we'll go ahead and type an example. And you know, again, I'm using git pod, so this has a bunch of stuff that's already pre-installed. Is this function an HTTP function, mm. and this is really asking whether it's going to be triggered by HTTP. So, I mean, I wasn't planning on doing that, so I'll just say no. We're going to keep it simple. We just want to have a function like our other ones where we can pass it some stuff. It was event types this function receives. I mean, again, the plan isn't to have anything here, so... Is there like a no option? And they really want us to uh, choose something here. Oh, you can't even choose a no option. Interesting. Uh huh. All right, so what we'll do is I'll just hit cancel on that and we'll just say yes, because then it will know what it wants to trigger. Then we have our example repo over here. Uh, so here we have our cargo.toml. This is going to uh, tell us what dependencies we have. We have Lambda HTTP here. Um, I'm not sure what Tokyo is. I wonder if that's their uh, web framework. Asynchronous uh, Rust runtime. Okay, software programming, run, runtime functions that enable asynchronous IO. All right, that sounds pretty straightforward. So that looks pretty good. We're going to go into our source directory. We have our main RS. So we already have uh, a lot of code here in place. And actually, it looks like it uh, basically does what I wanted to do, which was that Hello World example, which is great because we don't want to learn how to write Rust today, but we want to know how to execute and deploy Rust. Um, what's interesting about Rust is it doesn't have uh, uh, classes. It uses interfaces or something similar to interfaces like a Golang does. You notice here we have an asynchronous function for the function handler. Uh, we are looking at the event data. We're grabbing name and we're unwrapping it. So it passes as a variable who, we do interpolation, so it'll print it out. It's going to return a response. And then down below, Tokyo, which is the async library, I believe, um, because it's an async function. So that's pretty straightforward. That looks good to me. 
And it looks like this is the same example. So we can go ahead building and deploy your Lambda function. So we'll go ahead and do cargo Lambda build release. Hit enter. We'll go up and scroll up. Uh, cargo metadata exited with an error. Cargo toml does not exist. So I think it's because we need to CD into this directory. We'll try this again. There we go. So while that is uh, building, I'm gonna go ahead and just like uh, run. And we had this next line. It's really nice when they, they make it this easy to, uh, to do. It's not always this easy. Go ahead and paste this. Say example, cargo, lambda, or this will be CD examples. That's still building, so we'll just give it a bit of time to uh, build or compile. Okay, so that has compiled, which is great. Uh, what has it done? Oh, well, I think under target here, and we go into release. Uh, I'm just looking for that binary. So I guess, I mean, it must have generated out something here. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for under, under, under here, release. So anyway, yeah, there's a binary somewhere in there. Let's go ahead and keep following the steps and see if this uh, keeps working out. So build and deploy your Lambda function. So we did cargo Lambda build, cross compiling your Lambda functions. I mean, uh, the default cargo Lambda build your functions in x86.4. If you'd like to use a different architecture, I mean, it'd be cool to do it in ARM, but I, I don't, I'm, not sure, I'm not too worried about that. Cargo Lambda deploy, really? Are these all part of cargo? I'm really confused. Like, how, where are all these cargo commands coming from? I'm just noticing cargo lambda. Cargo lambda commands. What? I'm so confused. Does, does AWS have something to do with, car, uh, like, uh... <laughs> Uh, like the reason I'm confused is that like I cargo is rust and I'm really surprised that these are specifically there. Oh, sorry. It's because we installed cargo Lambda and that extended it. Okay. Sorry. I forgot that we, we had that command. So it's not part of the, the base car uh, cargo thing. These are additional commands. So this whole process looks completely different. So deploying your cargo Lambda. Um, so here it's suggesting that we might need to provide uh, an execution role. So that is fine. Um, this command will create the function with the same name of your package. I mean, I don't really need an IAM role because I wasn't planning on triggering it via HTTP. I was going to just um, use the event data to do it. So I think that we can get away with this, but if we wanted to actually trigger it um, via HTTP, via something, we would actually have to have that uh, role. Here it's interesting that we can invoke the function so Cargo Lambda remote. Mm. All right, okay. Well, let's just try it without the rule first. We could always uh, delete it and, and try here if we have an issue. So we'll go ahead and do this. Verifying role access. And we never attached a rule to it. So I think it's gonna complain here. So what we'll do, <laughs> is we'll need a role. Does it tell us what we need? A Lambda execution role. Let's just see what we need to have here. Role. This will also requires, uh, so this command assumes that your AWS account has permission to call several Lambda operations. If you're using layers, you must also provide that. This sub command also requires IAM role with privileges in Lambda. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a new role. I'm gonna make it very permissive because I don't wanna have to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out what it needs. Technically, we have to go over and make a policy. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. We'll just say Lambda. And I'm gonna go ahead and here to say Lambda. Say all Lambda actions. We'll just say for all. And that seems fine to me. We'll say Rust Lambda all. Everything for Lambda. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. I'll make a role here. Lambda. Next. Rust. Here. Next. 
Rust Lambda all. Like we should just have the ability to execute the Lambda, but if there's anything else it needs, I just don't wanna be uh, fiddling with this all day here. We'll go ahead and go look up Rust. We'll click into it. I'm gonna assume it wants the ARM, which I think that's what it wanted there before. We'll go back over to uh, GitPod or whatever you're, you, you happen to be using. And uh, we'll go back over to the instructions here and grab this command. We'll paste it in. Okay, I'll just make this one line because it's so darn small. We'll go ahead and paste this in, hit enter. And now it's deploying the function, excellent. We'll go over to um, Lambda here. I have too many tabs open, so I'm gonna just close some here. Oh, and by the way, I think in like uh, one of the other videos, we probably didn't clean up an ECR, so you might wanna clean up your uh, your container registry from earlier. I did not I did not get rid of this. Whoops, this one here, because these can uh, can cost money. So not a lot, but you can just go ahead and delete that. Um, so we have, we have our function. Here example, excellent. You're gonna notice we can't really see code. So it's bringing the bootstrap file here. That's interesting, which I think we saw over here a moment ago it was this, and this is a binary. So we're not gonna be able to read it, right? There's nothing readable there. So that's probably the entry point for it. Um, I just wanna go ahead and do a test. So I'm gonna write test here. I think the only thing that we have here is name, Andrew. And it might not be exactly this because uh, we might have to kind of uh, tweak this here, but we'll give this a test here. Hello, save. Let's test this. I don't expect this to work. Fail to deserialize incoming data into the function, payload type uh, function expected, JSON payload from API gateway, et cetera. So it is expecting a very particular format. Um, and so that is not going to be, or Lambda function URLs, that's not going to work for it. And uh, I mean, I don't really use Lambda function URLs ever because it's something newer and usually you always wanna have something behind your uh, API. But if we go to function URL over here, we, uh, yeah, we can go here, say, save, sure. So now we have a function URL that we can utilize to execute this. This is forbidden name equals Andrew. So yeah, I think we'd have to probably pass it something. I don't think it's just a matter of, uh, of doing this. I, I feel like we'd have to do something interesting. So um, maybe just to keep this simple, let's just continue on with this and see if we can utilize it this way. My, my question is like, when we do this rem this command, I would assume that this is uh, executing to the, uh, the remote server. Function not found. Oh yeah, the, uh, so we have to actually give it the name here. So we'll just say invoke. And we called this Lambda what? Example, okay, that's simple. Example. I'm not expecting this to work because this thing is expecting, well, let's just swap it out so it actually does work. But if we go into our cargo or sorry, our Rust code here, you'll notice that we have um, parameter for name. So let's go ahead and give that a try here. We'll say name, Andrew. We'll copy this, we'll paste the same, we'll hit enter. So failed to deserialize the incoming data into the function payload. This function expects adjacent payload from API Gateway, which is annoying. That's why I kind of wanted not to have um, anything specified for that. I'm not sure if there's anything in the, oh, we have Lambda HTTP up here. So maybe that is something here that is causing it to expect those requirements there. Hmm. All right, well, that's fine. We'll just have to figure out how to trigger from Lambda function URL, not a big deal. Yeah, invoking, that's what we wanna know. Invoking. So, okay, but if your function uses AWS IM auth, then you must sign each HTTP auth signed with this tool, such as AWS curl. 
Oh, there's a tool called Atlas Curl. I didn't even know that. How old is this? It's third party. That's really interesting that they're suggesting a third party service. Atlas doesn't normally do that. See here, performs any best service for signing uh, using curl interface. All right, well, let's give it a go. So we'll first install uh, this tool. And now that we have it, let's go back over to our Lambda and we'll grab this URL here and we'll paste it in. And I'm going to assume we type AWS curl to do this. Let's go take a look at the invoking command here. I'm going to just grab this whole one here. I'm just going to assume that we just substitute AWS uh, for, for what we normally would do here. We'll cut this out here. Now the question I have is what kind of payload is it expecting? Because it really depends on a few things. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this over. And if we look at this here, query string, it's saying query string. So if it says query string, I'm gonna assume we don't need to do this. And we could just say name, just message here, name Andrew. I have a feeling that this might be what we're trying to do here. Good, I've never used this library, so I have no idea. Credentials should be scoped to the uh, correct service Lambda. All right. So I guess it's outputting what it's actually doing. Access key, it provides a secret here. Hopefully that's not my actual secret key. I think it's a temporary one. It doesn't show session token. What the frick? Did it just expose my keys? Uh, echo, uh, sorry, ENV, grep AWS. Yeah, it just exposed my freaking key. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted to do, but if it works, I guess that's fine. So we go here, we're taking a look here. We got a 403 back, which is not really good. Credentials should be scoped to the service Lambda. Okay. So we'll go back over to here. I'm gonna edit this. I'm gonna say none. So the idea is if we do none, then when you choose none, the Lambda automatically creates the following po resource policy attached to the function. This makes your function public to anyone with the function URL. You can edit the policy later. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I don't really wanna figure this out. I just want to be able to trigger this. Plus we're not gonna keep this around for very long, but, and I'm already kind of uh, annoyed that I have to rotate out my credentials. So I'm exposing this, this video. I'm gonna go ahead and try this again with the regular curl. Uh, we'll just take this out here. We'll hit enter. And let's see what we get here. We got our 200, that's great. So let's go back over to, well, what was our response? Get name, hello. Uh huh. Because I think it was supposed to return back in the body that message, yeah. So I, I'm sure it's working. I just want to see the body. And it returns hello. Hello. I'm just searching for it to see if we can find it. Curl show body. Response. Uh, 
Is there like an easy way to read the body? Another thing that we could do, because this is now open to everywhere, which by the way is not a good practice, but it's just what we're doing for this particular example. If we grab this, we could probably just paste it anywhere now. So I'll go, go here and say name equals Andrew. Uh, we need a question mark there, I think. So it is working great. So that's our example of Rust. But uh, you know, the point of pointing out a Rust is the fact that it's a binary, so you can't really get any faster than that. Uh, so if you're looking for the fastest run and stuff, you can learn Rust, but I'm gonna tell you Rust is a little bit tricky to do. Let's go take a look here and that look, all looks good. I'm gonna just commit this to say cargo example. There we go. And let's go ahead and tear this down. Now this was not deployed with um, CloudFormation or SAM. Uh, there's probably a way to do it, but uh, I'm not figuring that out here today. Uh, this is not here, is it? This is showing old stuff. We'll go ahead and delete this. We'll say delete. There we go. And so that's all I wanted to do for this one, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Ciao.